the movement of water, to me, uh, it's life. You know, it's, it's like another being to me. My name is Julie Cohn, and I'm a Bay Area person. I have been raised here. I am very proud to be a Californian, <laughs> and I love being in this beautiful area. I used art while I was growing up to find my own space. Somehow, it was a comfort zone for me. And I also had a very deep connection to nature through it. I found a, a connection that was partly mysterious, and I didn't understand it, but it was also comforting. And once I found that, then I knew I didn't ever want to let go of it. So I decided to major in studio art in college at UC Berkeley. And no matter what else I tried, I always found that I came back to the watercolor. And ultimately, I told myself that I would continue with this medium for the rest of my life because it continually has something for me to explore. I just didn't feel like I had something to say with another medium. I had it to say with watercolor on a large scale and I wanted to push the boundaries to try new things that hadn't been done with it before. I started getting into watercolor when I was 25. Uh, I was taking a class at what was once called CCAC. It was a watercolor class with Mary Snowden. I started playing around with the watercolors on my own, not necessarily producing a homework assignment and seeing the wonderful things that it did. And I just got excited to do things on my own. It wasn't so much like, oh, let's make this for the teacher. But I really, really enjoyed what it was doing and all the surprises and how I could manipulate it, but then it would talk back to me. It was a very conversational medium and it continues to be that way for me. And I, when I found it, I was just crazy about it. Somehow, it felt like it was my personality. I think that when I touch into improvisation, I'm not feeling like I have to control everything in a way that is mechanical. There's a, an ebb and a flow to things. There's a touching in with what my heart wants, what my soul wants. There's, there's something about, you know, trusting the moment like there's something going on there that's really special for me in that improvisational moment. And I like the surprises a lot. It's as though it's a stream or it's a river and it's constantly moving and I'm playing with it. So it does make me feel like I'm part of nature when I use it because it has that ability to talk back in a way. I was schooled in realism. I really appreciate focusing on what's in front of me and learning from it and taking the beauty. And I appreciate it so much that at a point it was everything in my work. And I got to a point where I knew that I wanted to explore a more imaginative side of myself. And I was afraid of it because I was so taught that you don't do that. You paint what's in front of you or you look at the photograph. Or... But going into imagination was scary for me. And I even tried at one point and found that I was painting some things that were a little darker than I felt comfortable with. So I stopped. And at a certain point, middle age, I found I had breast cancer. I knew that I didn't want to deal with chemo and radiation. And I knew that art was going to be one vehicle for helping me to heal. And it was pivotal. It wasn't the only thing, but it was a pivotal aspect of my healing. I had first stage breast cancer. In my case, it was making my decision easier to not go with those traditional methods and to use my art in a more experimental way. And it gave me permission to say, I don't have to show anybody this work. 
I just need to do this for my own healing. I started making these images in a very little book. And every day that I went to the clinic, I would write a little note on the back of each of the paintings. They were mostly abstract. Or if they were representing something, I didn't know what they were going to represent until the painting was done. So I didn't have any pre-planning. And in a way, the paintings were telling me what my next steps would be. It wasn't about whether they look pretty. Pretty's great. Hey, there's nothing wrong with beautiful, pretty. But to me, I didn't want it to come at the expense of my feelings. That was really key for me. What are my feelings right now? And sometimes the feelings aren't pretty. So I need to express that. So the book ended up being filled within two to three months, uh, 60 little works. And I basically enjoyed it so much that these types of paintings started getting incrementally bigger and bigger. <laughs> and so that's how I've come to more abstraction at this point. Even though I love still to work with the figure and portraits and still life, I still do these things, but I really am putting a lot of my time into the larger abstracted works right now. We have, as human beings, these opportunities to play even in the most fundamental ways with a marker and make a pattern. We don't have to be an artist to do that. It's just the idea of allowing the imagination to percolate. And many of us are told we're not creative. The process is really what's important in art. It's about the development within. And if everybody knew that art could be used that way, not because we want to be famous, not because we want somebody to say we're good, because being really who I am is not caring that everybody loves my work. I need to feel that I'm being authentic. I think the biggest lesson that watercolor has given me is patience. Because it's a conversation, and because I am delving into areas with it that make it impossible for me to control certain things, I have to wait for the painting to be ready for me to do the next thing. With the larger works, I can work on one passage for an hour. And the passage is only two by three feet. But it stays wet, it's moving, it's developing. And if it's not ready to end, I can't end it. I think patience is important because in our society, we have been given opportunities to not have patience because we can do things faster than we've ever done them before. We need to be patient around other people's needs and other people's way of doing things that are not like our own. So when somebody shares something with me and I quickly react, then that's me imposing my need for something on them versus listening to hear them fully. What are they feeling? And it's so easy to want to correct, to want to make better, to want to do all those things. But patience requires listening, requires really hearing where that person is and accepting the person. Just like I want people to accept me for who I am. And when we don't let that happen, when we're impatient, a person can't find their true self. 